Today I'm joined by Christina Vogel. Christina is two-time Olympic champion, Olympic bronze medalist, 11 times world champion. Christina has suffered a severe accident in 2018 and is now inspiring others through her story and her strength and her positive outlook on life and never giving up. Welcome, Christina. Hello, nice to be here. Christina, actually, I was looking for getting in contact with you for very, very long, but I didn't know how to until our path crossed recently. So I didn't let this chance go of asking you to come on to the interview. Christina. Yeah, it's great. I thought you were very shy, huh? <laughs> but normally it's easy to contact me, but uh, it's great that we're here. Yeah, you're semi, semi famous, right? So you probably get a lot of uh, requests. So I didn't know if my request would go through or not. Uh, but you see the end now that we're speaking to each other. So, uh, absolutely. Yeah? Christina, when we met, I realized you have a passion or you really like fancy words like burpee. How come? Uh, yeah, May. Um, since the CrossFit uh, time gets so high, um, that we German just uh, always using these fancy uh, English words, Bobby, instead of uh, the normal German word. And uh, sometimes I am only in a gym. <laughs> That means when you say the German word for Bobby, as a, as a Bobby, as I know what, what I have to do, but uh, yeah, these. Oh, the CrossFit words are sometimes they're a little bit confusing, but... <laughs> I believe that. Christina, in your life as an athlete, what was your darkest moment? Mm, yeah, of course. Um, the two accidents, I think. Um, but on the other side, may they as well darkest moments, but they could be also the brightest moments because... Um, It shows that when you're believing in yourself and when you're believing that uh, you you can you can go forward, then you will go forward, of course. And yeah, but in the end, um, after the two accidents ahead, especially the last one, um, why I'm paralyzed and sitting in my wheelchair, um, showed me that it's okay to be proud of yourself. And as a competing athlete, I was never proud of myself, but now I am. So, yeah, it's hard to say that it's the darkest moment. Yeah. I saw your speech at the Rednernacht, and you mentioned when you were in the hospital that you realized other people were asking themselves questions that you didn't ask yourself. So questions like, why me? Why did it happen? Yeah. How did that come? Um, after my first accident, I had a um, mental therapist, really in white English word mental therapist um, and I asked that question why I am, why was I am at that time um, for the people who don't know um, and car, I was hit by a car and um, was then two days in a coma and broke um, broke a lot of things in my, in my, in my body but uh, I asked at that time why does that happen to me and I learned from, from her that these are questions Well, you ha have no answer because uh, you can't you can't change that moment. And um, this learning helped me a lot um, for my second accident that I never asked that question because it is what it is. And you decide the way you go on now. And I think when you ask that question, um, you will keep your you keep your mind and that in its position and uh, not giving you the, the right process to go forward and looking forward and see what you can do, of course. And it sounds so easily, but it isn't, of course. Uh, I have also sometimes moments where I'm struggling, but in the end of the day, I'm out of money and it, I think that counts. Yeah. And your first accident was in 2009. Yeah. And then eight months later, you competed at the World Championships, got the best yeah. result a German female rider got for 20 years or something. Yeah. And three years later, you are an Olympic champion. That's so correct, yeah. That went pretty quick. Sounds terrifying, eh, when you, you sign that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, there's still three years in it, huh? between, between accident and... Yeah, but it was very fast. Huh? Yeah. 
And the, what you just outlined, the help of the mental coach and asking yourself the right questions, has that also helped in your athletic career? Because after that, everything started, right? 11 World Championships, two gold medals. I think that the accident, um, the first accident, lured me that um, what I was telling, that um, it is what it is, and you can decide the future. And um, we all have sometimes uh, these bad moments in gym or on track where you're asking, why I'm doing this, and why it doesn't hurt so much? Um, but we're all asking us this question. And the last day, um, um, I was believing that you will be a world champion um, if you accept that very, very fast and um, go on forward. And yeah, so as to the grass. <laughs> <laughs> What was your best moment? Uh, in my second career, um, of course, being an Olympic champion is um, it's like um, I, I wrote a book um, it will be released in March 21. And um, I wrote a book with the ghostwriter. And when, or he told me that when I, um, I am speaking about the Olympic, Olympic Games, it is like I have a sparkling in my eyes and I'm like telling these are some really, really nice fairy tales. And maybe it is, it is a fairy tale which comes true when you, when you are Olympic champion. Because, um, Being in the Olympic Village, um, competing there and competing with the best results you, you could have um, with winning a gold medal is like, it's magical, you know? The Olympic Games are magical. So, um, yeah, of course, two Olympic gold medals, yeah, these are one of, one of the best moments so far. Out of the two, which one is the sweeter one? Mm, oh, that's a hard, oh, that's a hard question. Um, Ooh. The the first um, first Olympic gold medal and um, the sprint gold medal with Mia Remelta um, was so unexpected for us because in 2012 at the World Championships in in April 2012 um, we won the gold medal and team sprint with with breaking a world record but it was so unexpected for us um, the the world cup before we had When we had really luck, luck, when we was luckily, we could win the bronze medal. So, um, and we go to, to, to the world championships and really hoping maybe to win the bronze medal. And then we come out with uh, two, two new world records and the gold medal. And then you go into the Olympic Games and um, you thought mm, maybe we have that same luck and maybe we can win the medal, but we never thought that you can, that you can win gold. Um, so it was crazy, you know, but the Olympic Games in 2060, I had a different um, position in the world, in the cycling world, that everyone thought that I will be Olympic champion and everyone um, yeah, expected that uh, for myself. And um, that's a really, really hard position when the world expecting that you, you win. And just to win, um, is enough for you then, you know? It is in your mind that when you just be in second or third, uh, you will lose something, but you're not because you're winning a little gold medal, you know? But um, to win in this position, then the gold medal um, was, was something, something really nice. And for me, is uh, the sprint discipline, the crown discipline on, um, or the major discipline on track cycling. Um, so, make Long story short, um, I think the Olympic Games in Rio a little, a little, a little bit because of the uh, situation. Yeah. yeah. What happened to the saddle in the Olympic final? I tried to find information, but first the uh, race was, it wasn't stopped, but the start was stopped, right? And then yeah. also the f saddle fell off. What happened? Um, I, when you go to the starting line, our coaches um, keep our... Uh, keep our bike a little up that we can uh, choose the right position for the start. And when our coach um, made that, I hear just a crack. And I thought, oh shit, this could be my own because I had the problems um, the days before as well. So I went to a mechanic to fix, um, to fix my saddle again, go down to the starting line. 
And then um, maybe I do the best jump to the finish line. And it means that you throwing your bike under yourself to the finish line. That means the bike in a second. So before the finish is faster than, than you. Um, not really. <laughs> but um, <laughs> people who see, who see um, cycling know what I mean. And it, I think I did the best that the, the saddle and with the seat post just fell off of my frame. And there was nothing broken, nothing cracked, but yeah, it just fell off. And then I had had it had to manage to be to to be to keep my ass on the bike you know um with 60 kilometers per hour and uh we are so fast to ride without and saddle on a track bike normally that isn't isn't possible but i have more more luck than i can ride my bike <laughs> but i managed that and i think just after half corner i asked myself hey who wins I am the Olympic champion or Rebecca James. So what happened? And then I saw my boyfriend and uh, my national coach just jumping and yelling. And then, then they realized, oh yeah, I'm Olympic champion without a saddle. So that's really crazy. Cool. If you could travel back in time, what advice would you give a younger Christina? Uh, oh. Yeah, I think being proud of herself um, is important that take the, the rest times to, to be proud, to realize and to flex you. Um, and just keep forward, it will become so, it will come so, it will come what you're expecting. Um, because um, I was always someone who thought, uh, especially in training, that what I am training is not enough. So I, um, had always the discussion with my coach that he say, okay, it's fine, rest day. And I would say, no, 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 I have to go, I have to go, I have to go, more, more, more. And um, yeah, when I flag in a time, um, sometimes maybe it was too much. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that before, that you weren't proud of yourself as an athlete, but you are two-time Olympic champion. You are an 11-time yeah. world champion. How can you explain that? It is crazy, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's that what I what I say now that um, I always oh I'm out of um I come every time I come from the world championships. I told to my boyfriend this is the last year in my rainbow jersey. I really have to enjoy it because next year when I go to the world championship, I will be no world champion again, and that means that I kicked my ass so so hard that I never had time to be proud of myself. Um, that I always thought that I, I have to win. If not, I lose everything, you know? And that is really, really stupid. So uh, it cost me the years to really enjoy um, the rainbow jersey. When you're wearing the rainbow jersey, it's um, as well as such a nice feeling. And it's um, one thing I really love on track cycling or on cycling at all that when you are the current world champion, that you have something you can show to the rest of the world that you are the world champion. Um, not many other disciplines, not many other um, sports have that same symbol that cycling has. And uh, yeah, it would be nice to enjoy that more. <laughs> <laughs> cool. You were a successful dancer and a successful cyclist as a junior. And you made the decision by flipping a coin where to double down? Yeah, but I was 12 years old. Sorry, years old. Yeah. Um, I was a dancer um, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, on the main market in my hometown where my family lives, I had an um, yeah, an official dance with uh, 10 other people. So um, maybe you should stop that when it's an the best you know <laughs> um but i had these dance times with my friends um and in this age you you just enjoying that uh something with, when you can join with your friends you know um i never thought that i could be olympic champion one so um i enjoyed cycling of course because of my friends and i enjoyed dancing of course with my friends and um then it comes to the time where all the training session um come together. So I always have to choose 
going on to dancing or going on to, to cycling and my courses were really pissed off <laughs> that I um, sometimes not come to cycling or sometimes not come to, to dance. And because I couldn't choose, I just flip a coin. So um, what is it? What's the English word? So um, head or yeah. head or tal or cop yeah, yeah, in German. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's for, for dancing or it's for, uh, for, for, for cycling. And yeah, you know the result, huh? <laughs> the rest is history. Yeah. Crazy sometimes, huh? Yeah. yeah. What are the habits that make you a successful athlete and person? Mm. Maybe never being proud. <laughs> Maybe never thought that uh, that is enough. That um, you, yeah, pushing pushing your your yourself always to the best. And mental strength, I think. And yeah, sometimes a little bit of luck, huh? Yeah. Well, it's not a habit, but uh, yeah, I would would count it to that. Mm. And. It's not also not a habit, but a really, really nice crew around me. So I would never be that person I am without my coaches, my family, and uh, all the person who, who su supported me or myself. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen in an interview that was during your athlete career that you mentioned other people in your age are going out, enjoying, and you were disciplined and make sacrifices. Where did the choice come from to much rather make the sacrifices. Yeah, I was in crazy time because um, in a time where all my uh, friends stopped, stopped being athletes and choosing to uh, go more to school and make um, that a abitur. Yeah. Quarter I don't know. Like for <laughs> university or something like yeah. that. So, yeah. Um, I, I decided, no, it's making really fun what I'm doing. So I like And I see that when I'm competing um, and doing something with it, that um, it's successfully. And but then I saw that they really enjoy their life, you know, going to party and going out. And um, I was had to say, no, I can't. I couldn't. I can't go out because of the training session or because of the competition. And I think this is really hard for me, um, being always the latest. Um, always being the person who are not there, always being the person who uh, are not asked because it's uh, it's clear that I can go out. Um, but luckily, I had the right person, uh, the right persons in my in my surrounding, and yeah, of course, I luckily had a little bit of um, talent <laughs> in the time that I knew it makes really, really fun, and I yeah just wanted to see. Uh, how my way will go on in cycling when I am um, doing that. And yeah, luckily, <laughs> luckily I am. At what age did you have the thought of becoming Olympic champion or world champion? Or the goal? When was it really clear goal in your head? Um, I think the first time in 2007, Well, I um, was competing at the European, Junior European, European Championships. Um, I won two times, Brent and Salamita, I think. I was two times European champion. It was the first time that I thought, oh, yeah, I could, maybe I could be a uh, world champion. So, but really, really shy, really shy. -ish. So, uh, yeah, I think it was the first time, yeah. It all starts small, huh? Yeah, so small. So, and um, some athletes they're starting a career and always saying, "I want to be some some someday an Olympic champion and a world champion." Um, I think my partner Dear Rosa was such, such a person, and I was never that that one. So never, never. Um, yeah, I don't know why. Right? No. I saw in a speech that you gave, you said, "Machen." Macht, which we can translate loosely as success comes from doing. Talk us through that. Yeah, so machen macht. Um, it means that uh, you always know that, um, or you know that person who, who uh, has a big mouth and saying, ah, someday I will do this, and yeah, if I do this, I could do this, uh, but they're never doing it at all. So um, 
being being successful means that you have to do that everything which needed to be successful now. So it means that sometimes training is really, really painful, but you have to go through that. So um, there is no shorter way to be successful. Um, and sometimes it's painful. Sometimes you're asking yourself why I'm doing this, but in the end of the day, you, you did that. And when you did that, maybe you won. You will win, win sometimes. Um, and that's what, I'm, what I mean. Um, that machen macht so. Um, when you always remembering why you doing this, um, you will come to the way. So, yeah. 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 I have to share a story. One of our top riders. I think I mm -hmm. can see the same. He was. He went through very difficult times, switching from one, one sport to the next. Shoulder injuries, whatever, whatever. But he always kept going. He always kept going. Yeah. Yeah, and now you see him defending his title every single year. So, and hopefully more years to come. More years. To hopefully come. more years to come. Yeah. <laughs> But it's hard to make in German, you know. <laughs> 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 I am struggling with people. With people I know on track cycling, uh, which I really love and they're really really happy when they're winning. But uh, then my German heart, you know, always. <laughs> <laughs> It's not that I'm commentating, you know. I'm commentating um, sometimes for, for the UCI channel and sometimes uh, for a big uh, German uh, TV uh, channel. And, you know, my heart is always ah, jumping hard. Jumping up, jumping up. It's tough. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Do you have a morning routine? No. Um, I am, it seems that I always a really, really disciplined person, you know, uh, but I love sleeping. So um, I really, really want to stay in bed how long as possible. And um, because um, my, my plan is every day um, so different um, from being a coach for the federal police here, um, being a political speaker, um, commentator, doing many, many things on, on TV uh, mean that um, my daily return couldn't have a daily treat because my day is every day others. And um, the only thing is that I really, really love to sleep. So sometimes I decide not to go to breakfast, not to go for breakfast and stay longer on bed. I uh, think that you can say that's my only morning routine. <laughs> But I'm not I'm competing in it anymore, you know. I can do that now. <laughs> <laughs> Was it different as an athlete? Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, there was more well, choosing how much as possible staying in bed, but um, then have to, then I had to have a um, great a good breakfast, which um, keep me much energy I need for for the training session. Um, then I did a little bit of stretching and um, yeah, so um, took the much the right time to, to be awake to go for training as well. Then so um, and. As an adult, you you definitely have to eat great. So um, I would say when you go to your when you go to the petrol station and you give your car shit, so it could be fast. And when you get the best um, petrol for your car, it can be go fast. So and it's the same with the nutrition. Um, but now I'm not competing early anymore, so uh, I can eat what I want. Huh? <laughs> How do you prepare yourself for important moments? Mm, ah, that's a good question. Um, in, in cycling, I always um, believe that I can, yeah, it's, sometimes, you know, it's, it's, I always say that I will never be a Olympic champion or never be a world champion anymore. But then when I was on the line, I, I really, really want to push myself that I can do that. So it's, Confusing, huh, isn't it? Um, but I was really focused. Um, I prepared myself for every competition with uh, watching old um, sprint, sprint heat, um, hoping that I had the greatest training schedule as well. But at the end, um, just believing that it will go its way. Um, believing that you can do it. Believing that... Um, We have a great plan in the sprint tactics for us well. Uh, believing that we all feel the pain and who uh, 
yeah, the goal quickly or accepting as fast as possible would be the end of world champion. Um, for example, I had some someday in my world championship 2015, it was raining on the track. So um, in Paris, they, they stopped the race um, because they had to throw out the track because it was wet, you know. And of course, you're really struggling because you have to stay in the final on a world championship. Yeah, you can you can win the world title again, but they're scrubbing the, the, the track. So, uh, and I thought that just relax. It is how it is. But then when you go again, again to the line, be determining as, as much as possible. And now it's, it's the same, you know. Um, when I have a big keynote speech, um, for example, for hundreds of people, um, I just remember that I can do that and it's just me there on stage um, just telling about my life and uh, it will be okay. <laughs> Let's go through to that Olympic final in 2016. You get pushed into the ring, you stand there, your opponent next to you, you know three rounds to go. What goes through your head in this moment? Literally, I pissed in my pants. <laughs> so now I can say that because I'm not being competing at it anymore. Um, everyone who's saying that they're really relaxed when they uh, are on the starting line for Olympic gold medal events, yeah, they're just lying. So I literally pissed in my pants because I was so scared. No, <laughs> to be a few years again. Um, of course, I was scared because I knew um, I can be after the race the Olympic champion. And um, to say that it was um, double hard because 2013, 13, 2013, um, I could be the first time sprint world champion, but I lose in, uh, in two run against Becca James. So... Um, the person you faced in the final in 2016. Yeah. 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 So um, later, later, um, he was standing there again on the starting line. I knew I had one no. Um, the next one, I have to go. And I had that these, these, these things in my head, you know, this warning in my head. When you're losing this now, maybe it will be again like the World Championship in the Minions 2015. So really, really focus you. Go there, push yourself. And... Um, I think everyone can imagine that I really was scared that this happened again. So um, may you see that, that um, the Olympic gold medal final, last one where I lose my saddle, wasn't the greatest tactic at all, but I think I won it on this day the most. So um, not to lose it again like a few, a few uh, years later, uh, Ilya, and... Then I was especially double happy because of the situation how I won the gold medal, being without a bit losing a heavy, being a looping champion now in sprint, and then uh, made that confusing situation in my head that I was not losing and I won and two no against her. Yeah. Did you do anything specifically to not let the fear get the better part of you? Mm, I think... Fear is not bad. Um, fear is is good because um, then you are more focused, you know. Um, I think when you are going in any part of your life, you know, um, when you go there and say, it's easy, it's easy um, you're not that focused and, and you're not 100% in that moment. So I think fear is sometimes good. But uh, fear is... It's bad when it's uh, overwhelming you. So trying that he is not overwhelming you. Um, trying to focus on that. Um, be happy that uh, you have something in your mind that you remind you that you really have to push your ass 100 and be really focused and really know what to do on track or on your sport. Um, but not wishing that that it's 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 will ever ever go. So I think he is a good a good attitude which, which we have in competition. How do you overcome setbacks? I think I have two, two big, big of the setbacks in my career, of course. But which you knew, of course, um, because these both are in the press as well. But um, I think every athlete or every person has such a normal setbacks in, in life, you know. Um, when you're just cracking your knee or cracking your hand or something is in your family or um, then you 
have not the uh, 100% um, on, on, on your squad, um, everyone has little, little setbacks. So, uh, but I think always believing in yourself and always believing that when you try to be focused, trying to believe in that, um, yeah, it will, it will, it will go, go the way. And um, yeah, I couldn't say it other. Yeah, just will go, believing in yourself. Sometimes we need that setback, but then we're gone. Yeah. Who is your role model and why? Mm, um, in I had never, I had never um, um, special role model in, in cycling because I always choose the best things of, of everyone. Um, but then it's, it's, it means that are the people which are around myself. It's my boyfriend um, who is uh, so intelligent sometimes, maybe sometimes <laughs> um, It's my mother, it's my sister. And um, so many people who are always trying to, yeah, to push me forward, believing in myself, um, and sometimes just give me the hand when I what I need, you know, or sometimes the hug when I need it. And uh, it's not that role model. It's um, so many people around me and supporting me every day. Yeah. What is the best advice you received, and who gave it to you? Um, uh, yeah, what would I say? Um, machen macht. So, um, you have to do it. And when you do it, you move up slowly. And then be proud of yourself. It's okay to be proud of yourself. Not forgetting this because um, hopefully you're having a great journey um, doing what, you, what you're passionate for. It's really a privilege. And it's, all, it's okay to enjoy it sometimes. Back in the days, how did a typical training day look like? Ah, um, yeah, well, waking up, the early for me, <laughs> waking up, um, go to the gym or go to the track and um, have then the proper session, um, go back, having lunch, because I, I uh, live by my own since I uh, got out from school, I cook everything by my own. Um, Have then the second session, um, yeah, then go again, back, back to home, cooking, enjoying the friends sometimes, um, just the normal athlete life, because I think uh, just the normal athlete is, athlete life is that um, your day is full of training, um, and what is surrounding on that means uh, nutrition as well, go to the coach um, and speak about your shadow maybe, or speak about the next tactics, or go to the therapist and have a massage, something like that, or may you um, have injuries. So, um, yeah, it's 24-7, just everything that is in the topic of sport. Yeah. And in a week, how many double days do you have? So, meaning two sessions on a day? Mm -hmm. Three or four, I think I had. Three or four. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to nominate someone to be interviewed? Ah, yeah, maybe you can do it. I think, um, and the is defined to be in the cycling, cycling bubble. Um, I visit, visit her in, uh, in January um, because I was in Adelaide for, for, um, for, for a road ride. And Then we, we together spoke um, really, really um, truly about the feeling when we are graced against each other. So uh, you would never say that it was a feeling early, what you were thinking, but it was really nice that we had the, the same things in our mind, you know, and um, that we really, really hated to raise each, each, each other because we knew that we have to go 110%, otherwise we will lose it. And it's great to hear it, you know, on what I was thinking, what she was thinking. And uh, now to being a mommy and um, going such so many setbacks, so playing his, his, uh, his neck, for example, the then the um, Olympic champion, it's, I think she has 
had so many nice things uh, to say as well, yeah. Really cool. What's going on in the life of Christina at this moment in time? Um, any moment, uh, trying to be a coach <laughs> because um, I'm the coach for the federal police um, officer. That means we have an, in Germany such an um, board supporting system that um, elite come to federal police. They get education, but longer than the normal ones. Um, and be then after that a really, really great, hopefully, um, federal police officer. But then they go 100% to sport. And when they end the career, they go back to the police and uh, have something to work on. That means that um, while I'm doing sport, they get paid by the police and have all the uh, health insurance, Versicherung, um, by the police, um, and pension, Rentenversicherung. Yeah, I think pension <laughs> is the word. Pension, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, very important in Germany. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but, but I mean that I'm um, safe and I can focus to be um, a good athlete and uh, have no uh, fear about the future. And when they are in the education, um, of course, they do school. Um, in between, they do sport. And I have to, do, I have to be, be sh clear and be, sh be sure that they training good that it's balanced um, by doing uh, school and doing sport. And it's sometimes really hard because the education here is uh, much, yeah, much stronger, much harder than it was in, in school before. And um, of course it should be make fun, you know, and when you're having fun, it's easy to, uh, to stay so, so long here because they're having from 7 a.m. to in the morning to 4 p.m. In the, in the evening school in between Sunday the session, and then you go, uh, of course, to session. And uh, sometimes you have to go to Frankfurt Oder. It is um, a 45 minutes car drive from here to go to the track session. That means sometimes they again here um, in the in the area 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. in the evening and go then to to have a dinner, learning and preparation for the next day. It's uh, it's hard times. So um, and then Corona's everywhere, you know. You're trying to make plans, but every day it's changing. And uh, for me as a beginner coach, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah. Cool. Last question to what's going on in your life. You entered politics in 2019. What were your motives to do so? so first of all, I was asked, <laughs> asked Sorry? by a party. Yeah, um, yeah, I never thought I'd be a politician, to be honest. Um, but a party which I was always watching before asked me um, I could imagine doing this and then I thought um, yeah why not they asked me a time where I was sitting in the hospital and um, thinking about what I will do when I ever ever leaving this, this hospital and then I thought I saw the world on the maybe on the other way than um, the other politicians there. Yeah, I'm a fellow police officer. I am, um, or I was an, an cyclist, and computer cyclist and saw the world, and I'm sitting in a wheelchair and seeing the world, of course, different than uh, other walking persons. And I thought, yeah, maybe um, I can help that to to have some great, great, great city. I really love my hometown, and uh, for me, from speaking early was just, Firstly, because uh, I had a track, I had a great gym, and the area was really, really close together. So um, great coaches, great people who believe in me. And I thought, yeah, maybe it's now time to give something back to my city. And um, then I decided to go, yeah, to go up there, was nominating and being now, um, yeah, being there in my home councillor, Stadt, Stadtrat, home councillor, I think. Yeah. Councillor. City councillor, I think. Probably yeah. city councillor, yeah. Thing. Probably city yeah, councillor is the word, yeah. Where can people find you? Anywhere. On Instagram, going through the world, on the tracks on this world. So um, I'm living in Erfurt and uh, close to Berlin at the moment. Um, and yeah, everywhere there where you can have some fun. I am there. <laughs> Best channels, Instagram, your website, christinavogel.com.de. Yeah. Yeah. 
www.dot.dot.dot.de. Well, we'll I will find out. Oh Gott, you are. Das haben wir noch. I think that's e. Uh, yeah, Instagram, Facebook. Um, I am on Twitter. And um, yeah, when people see me, not to be shy and to ask for a picture or uh, just uh, a little conversation. I'm, I'm really, really happy when someone is not too shy and um, goes straight to me and say hello. And um, yeah, it's, it's great to to connect to other people, you know. And um, I think that the, the most privilege why I'm doing this um, and sharing my journey so, yeah, authentically, um, that I feel that I can motivate people. Just I am who I am. And um, when you're seeing someone and they just telling you as um, yeah, strange people, you know, so unknown people, um, just tell me the, the inner, inner stories of their hearts and um, what they are believing, uh, what they going through at the moment. It's, uh, it's great that they are so, so honest to me, you know, um, and that's just, I think, the biggest, the biggest privilege I can uh, enjoy at the moment. Yeah. Really cool. Christina, thank you for your time. Thank you for your words. Keep Thank inspiring you. people. You're a great champion on the track and off the track. Thank you. Thank you.